a good evening good afternoon good whatever it may be at the time you're watching this you might be watching this at 2 a.m tomorrow morning so good morning to you at that time um i just wanted to not that anybody cares or not that it really matters but i just wanted to give my opinion and my thoughts on this james watson mlf situation um i am a bass fishing addict okay not just a fishing addict, but I'm a bass fishing addict. I like to crappie fish. I like to walleye fish. I like to trout fish. But I love to bass fish, okay? And anybody who has ever grown up with me or anybody who knew me, knows me, or whatever, knows that bass fishing is what gets me going, okay? Um, I'm an addict. Um, I admit that all the time. Um, it's my drug, you know, I, 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 I don't really drink. Yeah. I might have a beer every now and again. I don't smoke. I don't, I don't do drugs. I, I don't ever really had an addiction to anything, but I got an addiction to bass fishing. I really do. Like if there was bass fishing anonymous, and I know that's kind of poking fun at that in all seriousness though, like that, that would be my addiction. Like, you know, I, my name is Matt and I'm a bassaholic, you know, and I know that's kind of making fun of people who have serious problems that I'm not trying to make light of that, but that's the truth. Like ask my wife or anybody else that's, that's in my circle. That's what gets me going. So when I see things like this James Watson deal, it really just kind of disturbs me a little bit that an organization would make that decision. Um, professional men and women within an organization would would make decisions like that um i think there's so many layers this is one huge onion it isn't a one size fits all situation or problem or issue this is multi-layered multi-faceted and i don't have all the time to talk about all that so you will have to go on your own and do a little background research um, a good interview to first see the issue would be the bass talk live with mark jeffries and matt pangrak you just have to Google it. You can probably Google Bass Talk Live, uh, Boyd Duckett interview. That was done when Boyd Duckett's investment company or group, whatever it's called, um, bought FLW after the tragic ending to FLW. Unfortunately, I was too young, um, and I really wasn't into tournament fishing at the time of FLW. I really wish I would have been. Um, I wish I would have had somebody in life that guided me through this tournament deal like I kind of do now. Um, I really didn't. Um, I give a lot of the credit, uh, probably 75% of the credit that to my buddy Jeremy Montgomery. Um, we can go into that another time, another place. But I met Jeremy just by happenstance, reached out. Just by happenstance, we started fishing together, and we, we fished a Stockton Friday nighter. Gosh, man, I don't know how many years ago it's been. It's been five or six years ago, probably. And I, that's all I was doing. I was fishing like a couple little local tournaments. And then I met Jeremy, like I said, by happenstance. It was probably meant to be. If you believe in that, I really do. Um, I think God brings people into your life. And I think God brought Jeremy into my life. And uh, for a reason, for the purpose. And uh, he's guided me through this. He got me involved in like Mo Bass here in Missouri through the state. And then now TBF, which I've fallen in love. So I give a lot of the credit to Jeremy. I wish I would have known a guy like Jeremy when I was in my teens in high school that could have like I could have fished with and he could have guided me and shown me how to get into tournament fishing and do it right. So I would have had a bigger advantage because I'm I'm 38 and I feel like I'm really new to it. And I essentially I have. I've really only been doing this for 10 years, really. I mean, it was in my late 20s when I really really started tournament fishing hard i really you know it wasn't just a one or two jump in with my buddy chase or you know this and that we'll just go fish this like fundraiser deal you know so um like i said i could go into that at another time another place my dream i work for a really good company they treat me well they treat everybody good it's a great place to work it's a local small business and so this is what i'm about to say isn't like an admission or anything so i don't even take anything out of context but is it my dream job no they treat me good they pay good I make a very good living. I'm very satisfied. Um, 
but my dream is to always be in the industry. And like I said, I'm 38, so my time is kind of ticking with all these young kids and stuff out there that are trying to chase the dream too. But my, you know, my dream has always been to work in the fishing industry and eat, breathe, and sleep it, not just eat or breathe it, but a full deal, make my life in the industry, you know? So that's a goal I've always had, and I still try to pursue that. I, and as I said, I'm not, this isn't a mission of anything, so please don't take it out of context, but we all dream. Whether we want to be an NBA ball player or NFL or major leaguer, we want to be the best little league coach there ever was, we all have a dream, and that's always been my dream. Um, whether it's in actual tournament fishing, making my life as an angler or working for a company. So anyways, um, back to the James Watson deal. Um, I think it's really sad. First of all, I don't think that either either organization is perfect. I don't feel like Bassmasters is perfect. I love Bassmasters. Um, I'm, I shouldn't say I'm more involved in Bassmasters than MLF because I'm more involved in the Missouri Bass Federation or the Bass Federation in general. Um, and so they're kind of under the MLF umbrella, so to speak. So I guess I'm kind of more involved in MLF now, but I don't think either organization is perfect. I wish Bassmasters would do more and create more of like the BFL style tournaments for each region and have region tournaments like that, like MLF and FLW started back in the day. I think that's the one thing that Bassmasters is missing. And if anybody is at Bassmasters watching this, um, pass my suggestion along because I think that it would help the entire organization having regional tournaments like the BFLs. Um, because the only thing they have now are the at the state level, and then you go to the Opens, and then the Elites, and that's it. That, that's really just three three tiers. I feel like they're missing a tier in there. Anyway, so um, as I'm waiting for my son to get back from his field trip and trying to hopefully to get back and we get to baseball practice, um, go back to James Watson. So um, I don't have an opinion. I've never, never shook Boy Duckett's hand. I don't know Boy Duckett. I've never met Gary Klein, never shook Gary Klein's hand. So with that said, I, I don't know them, know them. I only know them through what I've seen on social media, interviews like on Bass Tech Live and other podcasts or streaming services, channels, whatever it may be. Um, but I really think that they are missing the ball in this James Watson deal. I think James Watson, for what all his flaws, now you may not like his mouth, he does say some things sometimes I wish he shouldn't as far as language and this and that, but he's he's 100% authentic. He he wears his emotions on his sleeve, and he's going to tell you what he thinks, how he thinks, and and how it is right then and there, whether there's a 12-year-old kid standing there or an 85-year-old man. That's just James Watson. I respect him for that. Like I said, sometimes I kind of have to watch some of the things at the house because – I do have a 10 year old son who is loving, starting to love bass fishing, especially after going to the Bassmasters Classic. And I will say this if James Watson ever sees this, thank you very much because my son has talked nonstop about the Bassmasters Classic. And he met you along with many other pro anglers, and you've totally made a huge impression. And that's where I want to go with this also is I think MLF could have sat down with guys like Watson and others. Who have been more vocal and said hey guys let's really do this but unfortunately the optics of the whole deal for me they just don't seem to want to do that for the optics of it and i heard one of their top anglers if not their top angler on bass talk live yesterday it just seems like there is the what i would call the boyd's club he's got his little club of boys and I think they're boys. It's not many of like the men, the older guys. It's kind of the young, the young up and comers, and some of the, you know, the, the guys, the YouTube guys. Okay, um, but they're all the younger guys. I just feel like he's got his club, and if you're not in the club, then you're just kind of out there on your own. Good luck to you. Hope you make the top, whatever it is this week, whether it's the top seventy cut or the top eighty or eighty-five. And if you're out of the loop, you end up like Mike McClellan, who is an owner. They kicked him out. They said, oh, you didn't fish good enough. We changed the number. Now we're going to have whatever. And Mike McClellan, who is a freaking stick, an Ozarks fishing legend, is not on tour. He's fishing the EQs now and fishing a bunch of stuff around here, which is awesome because they get to fish against the pro legend like Mike McClellan. But neither here nor there. I think that Mike is a good example of not being in the club. I think if one of the club members 
would have not made the cut. It would have not been in that top whatever. The number would have been changed to make sure one of their boys got in it. But because Mike isn't in the club, even though he's an owner, they kicked him out, essentially. So I think James isn't in the club because he is honest and vocal. Like I said, is James perfect? Not at all. But I think MLF, Boyd Duckett, Gary Klein, whoever, managing company, Johnny Morris, for goodness sake, all the major sponsors, that somebody should have all gotten in a room and said, hey, we did wrong, you did wrong, let's start fresh, what can we really do to change this, let's change the trajectory of the company, because the way I look at it, you may not be around three, four, five years. If Bassmasters gain steam and they do come out with some sort of BFL-style regional tournaments that they can make money to help pad the pockets and pay for things up there, oh my goodness, you might see a ginormous shift. And it may be going there. I don't know. I don't have any insider information. Like I said, I just know what I read on social media, watch on YouTube, etc. Okay, So I don't know what their financial situation is, but it doesn't seem to be good because of all the changes. I never think change is good. Slow and steady wins the race, and they make a lot of changes for everything to being so stable and so solid over there. I just don't have the faith. So anyways, I just feel like MLF has done themselves a huge disservice. James is one of their probably most popular all-around anglers as far as popularity. He's got huge, huge social media following, and, and that's what everybody wants now in pro fishing. You can't just rely on skill. There are so many skilled regional anglers that I fish against that are older that have no desire to do social media, don't even have a Facebook page because they're in their 40s and older, but gum, can they catch bass. They could catch bass over here in this ditch that's flooded from the rain the other night. They're that good, but they don't do social media and they don't care to because all they want to do is go to Table Rock, Stockton, Palm de Terre, Bull Shoals, Lake the Ozarks, go cash a $3,000 check and live to fight another day. They're not worried about it. But if they were and they had a social media, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, they'd be, they'd be awesome. But they have no desire and they're comfortable. They're fine, which is, that's good for them. Um, but in today's age, in today's world, if you don't have a huge social media, I, that's what I think holds me back sometimes is my social media kind of sucks because I'm busy. I got two kids. I got a wife. I got a full-time job, got little league baseball, so on and so forth. And I just don't have time to, to do the YouTube and go buy a GoPro. And, and you know, there's a guy, Luke Ruth around here. He's phenomenal angler and he's got the social media down. You know, he's been on some podcasts and some Facebook shows and this and that. Good job, Luke. He's, he's figured it out. And, we're all probably striving to be more like him to get there as far as the social media. He really nails it. He does a great job. Um, he kicks my butt all the time, too, fishing some of these events. So he's a good angler, too. Um, but I just feel like I know I've taken almost 13 minutes to say this is I just feel like probably MLF has 75% of the blame and they're in the wrong. And James does have 25% because no one is blameless. In this whole matter, you know, James could have handled it different. But if everything that I'm hearing is true and Boyd refused to talk to James and Gary refused to talk to James and all they got where he got was sec secretaries and other members, then that's wrong, too. That's 100 percent wrong. They all should have gotten the room. Like I said, Johnny Morris uh, being the being the title sponsor, the owner of the title sponsor and then James's sponsors and mlf gary and boyd and whoever else and who you know whatever the angler they have this alleged anglers association deal that they help make decisions and representation if you have that why aren't you sticking up for james he's an angler it doesn't matter my experience with unions and representation it doesn't matter if the guy's wrong you're supposed to stand up for him that's how this works I was a union member at one time and guys screwed up all the time but the union fought for them because they were a member now, what kind of anglers association are you if you're not sticking up for an angler in your association? You're weak. It's horrible. So anyways, that's my thoughts. They could have marketed the heck out of this uh, fish boat docks, FBD. Boyd should have laughed it off, but he didn't. Apparently, he got mad. He got frustrated at James. James was told to cool it, didn't. And I'm sure some of the stuff that was said at the Classic and was said in passing, and I'm sure that... I. We all have snitches, right? Everybody at work has a snitch that goes to the boss. You can sneeze wrong in the back corner while you're doing your job, but yet the snitch. I'm sure there. I'm sure MLF has a few anglers that are snitches, and I'm sure they 
We're documenting things that James said and did at the Classic and who he talked to and what hat he wore and what shirt he wore. I'm sure they all got back to Boyd and it was like, oh, James did this because it was shortly after the Classic, between the Classic and Easter, that all this went down. So, I, you know, I just, like I said, now I've taken 15 minutes to, to do this, but I like James. I like all of his companies that sponsor him, except for one, because one of them is a competitor, a national competitor of my company that pays my bills and feeds my family. So not too fond of that company. It's a plumbing supply company. You all can figure it out. I'm not going to say their name because I'm not going to give them free advertisement. So, but that's only one, but I love Black Rifle Coffee and everybody else with his, his brand is awesome. So like I said, that's my opinion, whether anybody wanted to know it, anybody cared, it matters, whatever. Um, but James Watson, you keep doing you, and I believe he's probably going to come out smelling like a rose on this because I bought a hat the other day to support him, and I just got my notification that it shipped. So they're making a lot of hats right now and shipping a lot of lot of James Watson clothing from the company he's using to do that. So anyways, thank you again for always watching. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel. If you agree with me, disagree with me, just let me know. So as always, take care. God bless y'all. We'll see you on the water.